Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. This is the Outsourced PM podcast show. I am with the one and the only Michael Sanza, resident virtual assistant expert. And uh, Michael, you're preparing for a flight tomorrow again. You were in London two weeks ago talking to potential clients over there around virtual assistants. You know, at the start of December, which is a couple of months before that, you were at a property management event in London. Uh, talking virtual assistants and now what are you doing tomorrow so tomorrow Dan we are getting on a plane and heading over to the Philippines which we haven't been able to do in two years two years you never would have thought that with such a big team in the Philippines that you could have not visited for two years but you never would have thought that for a second it just goes to show what you can do remote Darren, right? We have everyone. But, you know, we're, we're going to get over there, give everyone a big hug and thank you for everything they've done. But, you know, like a lot of them, we haven't met in person. Now, this is a spontaneous trip and we're only going for a few days. And the purpose is to just say hi, thank you, give them a hug. Uh, we're not discussing work with them. We're not discussing strategy with them. It it's is culture, just culture and, you know, just the reconnecting reconnecting we just want it to be fun we've even booked out like an entire restaurant so that everyone can eat as much as they want and drink as much as they want and sing as much as they want if that's what they want to do <laughs> they do, i know they like karaoke <laughs> so <laughs> just before we get into what are they going to feed you any balut and can you let us know what balut is so um, balut is a um is a duck a fertilized duck egg. So there is a baby duck in there and it's a delicacy and they crack it open. They drink the juice that's in there and juice is probably the wrong word, but, um, and then there's a duck fetus in there and they eat it and they crunch the little bones and they're like a soft shell crab, um, but there's the feathers and everything. And no, I will not eat it. And yes, they are still going to try to get me to eat it. And yes, they have bought some to bring and it's not on me. I'm going to try and get Dennis to eat it. And if he doesn't want to eat it, I'll get someone on the team. It's good to know you said no. So that gives me permission to say no. Oh, this is like the food. only thing that I will not eat. I mean, you know, I eat, I eat a lot of food. But look, I know they're wonderful people. And, and um, yeah, I, you know, I, I certainly, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I'm not able to make it. But, boy, I, it would be, it'd be a good time. So, let's now, what we've, what we've covered everyone so far, we've really wanted to take you on a journey, showing you, opening your eyes to all the different things that a virtual assistant can do. And, look, we've really explored. It's very much is having that trusty um, property manager assistant, but not based in the desk next to you based virtually one internet connection one phone call away one text chat away one zoom away um just like you've worked out through COVID, that you know we've seen that we can competently manage something with team members based virtually which leads to the question they can be based anywhere in the world and so we've talked about virtual assistance um you know with the leasing process we've covered then being involved with taking leasing inquiry, then being involved with making sure the tenant submits their application, all of that work around leasing, and then the application processing itself. We've done a podcast just on that. We've only just finished a podcast on getting the tenancy set up, getting the data entry done, getting the welcome pack done, the ingoing inspection management, and helping the property manager taking the burden of all the little admin stuff and all the work that has to be done around that. Then also getting involved with a tenant induction as well. There's a that, that, that leasing process, Michael, from when the property gets put onto the portal right through to when the tenant walks out with the keys or has the keys, there's a lot of work that we've taken off the shoulders of property managers by using virtual assistants. So if you haven't heard those, get into those other podcasts. Of course, you can listen to them on iTunes, Podbean, on Spotify, or just go to inspiredgrowthtraining.com or TeamSpot Design and you'll get the links to those podcasts there. But um, Michael, we're now talking today about lease renewals. Uh, we've already covered also repairs and maintenance. We'll do another podcast talking about how virtual assistants can be involved with chasing late rent. But let's talk about lease renewals. Um, and just straight off the bat, you told me one of the first things, this is something property managers just don't do. But first thing a virtual assistant can do right at the beginning of the lease renewal process is go and check out the rent value of the property ready for the new lease, the new lease renewal. How can they be involved in that? Yeah, so like we used, we used to use CoreLogic, we used PriceFinder now, going online, finding out what the comparables are. 
Um, and, you know, some people say that how can a virtual assistant figure out what the rents are? And look, they know it's three bedroom, two bathroom, one car, like whatever the parameters are, they know. And at the start, they would have to send that off to me or the property manager. And I would say, yep, exclude these ones. Perfect. And then I could look at that and work out a rent. Um, but over time, they started to understand the values and the rents and what constitutes an, an amazing, an average and a subpar type property, right? And, and how you would apply that value. The other thing too, Darren... A property manager is only going to be checking this stuff anyway. So it, the, the, the VA is going to be gathering all this information and presenting it to the property manager, right? Yeah, the grunt work. And it got to the point where I would say, Darren, um, you come to me with what you think the rent should be, right? Because I'm going to look at that pretty fast and go, yep, bang on. Um, and they would know that it was an above average property. And they, they, I would tell them, this is an above average property. They would know there's going to be a bit of a premium on that. And then I've had people say, yeah, but... There's nothing available at the moment. You're not going to get any comparables. No one's rented anything for a few months. Then it's a case of, you know, instead of being 500 metres, your perimeter, you go a kilometre or one and a half kilometres, but you find comparables. And then common sense prevails. But there's no reason to roadblock someone working out the grunt work and helping you with the rent. You know, as a property owner myself, with my property managers, they would never, I mean, I would get a letter once a year and it was a standard letter with, we don't recommend a rent review. It was always there. We don't recommend. Would you like to have a rent? And I would never be given a, um, a comparative rental analysis. There are, there's very few offices out there, Michael, that would offer or send to the owner a comparative rental analysis of what their rental property is worth at this time for consideration for the new lease renewal. What you're telling us here with virtual assistance, we can change that process entirely and every, and, and, and every owner can have that level of service if we've got a virtual assistant involved. Yeah, I mean, we there, there were two ways. So we would send out the letter saying, you know, it's renewal, rent can be this much, what we'd like to do. But th there's more result like when a property manager or someone calls. So one, we would call the tenant, contact the tenant and say, hey, look, what are your intentions for, for, the, for next year? Are you thinking about staying on? And more often than not, they would know, yep, we're, we're, gonna, we're looking to stay on. Or they would say, no, we're going to find something bigger. Or, but at least the conversation has started. For those who say, either way, you've got to go back to the owner and say, hey, look, they're not looking to renew the lease, so in which case you can give them the notice to vacate or, you know, whatever the, the, the state legislation allows you to do. Uh, and then you work out the owner's instructions because some owners, it's, a, it's an ongoing investment property. So they'll say, yes, I'm guided by you. If you think we should increase it, increase it. Or some owners will say, no, leave the rent as is. They've been good tenants. Next year we'll, we'll look at doing the increase if they stay on. But either way, the owners give, give yep, if the tenants want to stay on, great, let's lock it away. And then the owners are on, on, the, on the back seat, on the park bench, and the assistant kind of steps up and says, great, the owner would love you to stay. For the next 12 months, we're looking to do, do, do an increase of $5, $10, $15. But that's where a negotiation may start. They may accept it. They may come back with a counter. But either way, you've opened the narrative. The property manager can step in if they want to, depending on yeah, the level that it gets to. But um, all the grunt work's done. Yeah, and that, that's the whole point. It's the grunt work because lease renewals are still a burden uh, and they still have to be done. Um, and it, it, there, it, there is a lot of automation that can be done in this. There are some tricky things, I think, that uh, and a virtual assistant has to be aware. But So we've got the appraisal done. We've got this is what the rent is. I mean, a lot of property managers right now um, haven't got that ability to say to an owner, hey, we've done a comparative rental analysis. Here it is. Well, we can actually be presenting that to owners at this stage, which is unheard of in most property management businesses out there. Some do, do them, which is really good. I've never, seen, right. I've never seen a comparative rental analysis done on a property that I've got at least from time. But it's evidence-based. So, Darren, if, I, if we can present to you what the market is actually doing mm -hmm. and letting you know what other properties are actually renting for, it makes it easier. It does. Because a lot of the owners don't actually know. They think that their property is a unique castle. And, this, you know, even though everything else in the area is the same, your rent increase might be limited by its surroundings. Yeah, it could. But at least knowing what the market is doing, because I know a lot of property managers either don't consult the market to see what's going on, like get on a, a big 
property marketing portal and take a look. Um, they've got a gut feel, which is usually perhaps not up to the minute of what the market is doing, or they, um, they get laxed and they're not willing to put it up to a level that the market will pay because they feel that they don't want to lose a tenant or something like that. And, they, and so that now develops a gap of what the tenant is paying and what they could be paying as well. Um, and and a, an, an appraisal is going to uncover all of that. Um, moving forward, Michael, um, so we've talked about the tenant is now going to be approached for their instructions, right? Yes. Um, and uh, I guess as an old school property manager myself, usually those instructions are pretty much um, straightforward. But what about tenants that, oh, look, uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not, I'm not sure well, yet, or I'm still thinking about it. Can I get back to you in two or three weeks' time? That's the stuff that takes up the property manager's time and now having to reschedule the contact or whatever. What, what sort of you know, ways or a virtual assistant can be involved in relieving that process? So we were able to give notice to vacate to those who weren't sure that we could rescind, right? It's either that, you either go to rescind them or you say, look, no problem. We're going to issue you with a rent increase for X amount, right? It, you know, if they're not looking, you know, if they're not quite sure, because that's either going to prompt them to move or prompt them to sign. You might say, look, with a rent increase, um, it might be twenty dollars, but if you sign, it might be fifteen dollars. Yep, you, you've got some interesting animals going on in the background there. <laughs> well, working from home has its unique, uh, you know, sound effects. <laughs> Sounds like your dog's just got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and they know when the food is. I think everyone's like getting home and they know the, the food's available. <laughs> so, all right, moving on with this. So um, what about, um, so I just want to put my old school property manager hat on. What about, okay, rents are going up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to switch off my phone. Sorry, everyone. That was Jimmy Barnes. <laughs> all right, moving on. So, um what about rent increases and, and, and virtual assistance being involved in that um, and, you know, and around the notices to deliver rent increases and, um, and you know, tricky stuff with uh, the... <laughs> this podcast is getting boggy, isn't it? <laughs> Say hello, Rosalia. <laughs> the joys of working at home. All right, getting back on track. So sometimes... We can affect the rent increase, but for legislation reasons, it can't fall neatly in sync with the lease renewal date. How does a, a, proper, a, a virtual assistant navigate around those tricky things that can happen with lease renewals? I guess with each state, though, there is uh, legislation and, uh, and requirements. And yes, you can split it up. And, you know, so, so to let everyone know who, who's, who's listening to this today, my kids just got home. <laughs> middle of of the podcast and that makes my phone it ring. <laughs> got the dogs in the background and you know so i guess we have to make sure that the vas and i hate using the term vas but you know i guess for the purpose of this vas um we have to make sure that they're aware of what that legislation is and some states don't allow you to give you know notice to vacate you without any reason anymore so you can't just do that but again what i was touching on before was it would be okay if you, if you don't know what you're doing the rent increase is going to be x and if you look to sign another lease, it will be Y, right? And this was a tactic that we used to ensure that we got some type of response from the person. And, and the, the rent increase was, was within reason. It wasn't like it's an exorbitant, you got to pay $100 more. It's market rent, but there'd be some flexibility there. All right. So we've, we've got terms, we've got the, you know, it's a six or a 12 month. We know that the rent amount, all of those sort of things, we can go back to the base agreement for the owner name, tenant name, property address, all of those sort of things. How can a virtual assistant get involved around creating that lease? And what, what are some of the technology that works really good? Um, so for the VAs to uh, help with, with the lease, you know, you've got DocuSign, there are other online platforms that allow you to kind of automate creating a lot of the lease documents um the, the narrative with us was and with other clients we go through we work out what the rent is we know where the leases are kept we find out what the confirmed conditions are for that lease renewal we enter that in to whichever platform we're using 
we get that signed off. That's all um, confirmed. The tenant signs it off. And then we, we, we put that, we update the um, CRM. So property tree, property me, whichever, whatever it is. And then it's business as usual. We make sure that the tenant is also aware 30 days out again, what their new rent is going to be. Yeah. Right. There's another reminder before that, but then there's the other reminder, the final reminder. So they know when they pay the next one. The whole point is this can be trained. And with using screen technology, screen recording technology like Loom, which is like Zoom, but you can even using Zoom, you can record your screen. You can share your screen and record it, which you can you can easily train a person to create a lease. Look out for this. Look out for that. If you're able to teach a person in your office around leases and how they work, you can do a re screen recording and teach that. And the great thing is that once your screen recording is done, it's done forever you don't have to train those steps again if you've got an up-to-date video a bit different from a person in the office you get a new person the training all starts all over again you don't need to do that once you've got a library of instruction videos already done um then then it's easy to do okay so yeah. Michael, we've got we've used just on that too darren like while we're onboarding our team members we get the agencies to go into loom go into zoom and do recordings of the tasks on how they like it fundamentally it's the same across the board but each office has their nuance when they start things when they want things done yeah. so it's really important that you know you're not trying to reinvent the wheel but how you how do you want it done that's important that we let the virtual assistant know how you want it done and for me I, you know i've had this role with my virtual assistants and my executive assistant sometimes speed is more important than efficiency so i might get them to do a task 80 percent, and then i'll come back to it and check it and then give them instructions on the rest of it, or for our property managers out there, get, get your videos done, get your virtual assistants on it, but the lease doesn't get signed by the tenant or submitted to the tenant until you've checked it. You know, it'll take you a minute. Any property manager takes a minute or 30 seconds to look over that schedule to know that it's correct and without you then going creating the whole thing. So instead of spending... Um, a hundred percent of the time you're now spending only 10 percent of the time and getting your virtual assistant to do all that work and your work is simply checking the stuff before it goes out you're the quality controller at the gate and just to make sure that there is no mistakes because i think michael you and i agree we can't be making mistakes on this stuff particularly around rent increases with the sensitivities of dates and giving the notice in accordance with our with our state legislation. We've got to be very, very careful around those. So property managers, you need to be looking out for that stuff as you normally would anyway. You know what though, Darren, it's not isolated to a virtual assistant making an administrative mistake, right? Like a wrong amount on there. I see, and I've seen over decades, property managers making mistakes of putting in wrong rent, wrong dates. So to think that this is an isolated, can be an isolated issue with someone that works from home, um, you know, not, not in the office, it, it's not. So like you're saying, Darren, the instructions that you give using Loom and Zoom on clearly how you want things done, that minimizes the risk of errors like that. Yeah. The difference is, Darren, when people are in your office, they don't get nearly as much training as someone that's working remote. I would be mortified training someone old school way of having them in the office, explaining how things are done or referring to procedures or whatever. Uh, I would be mortified in doing that because I want to have well, my video done. They can look at that. I'm saving my time. Um, I can be giving tasks um, through a chat system or a tasking system or something like that. Um, I can give a Loom video or a screen recording of individual tasks. That if they're unsure, they don't have to ask me a question. They can go back and rewatch the video. Uh, it's just so much more efficient now using the virtual tools that are available to you instead of it doing an old school, old training way of having someone in the office. It's so much more efficient and effective. Um, and here's a tip. Here's a tip. If you've got these videos, go to your YouTube channel, set up a playlist and just make it unlisted or private so that only people with your e with that email assigned to it can access it. So then your VA has a really quick reference guide. They all use YouTube. They know how to use it. They go to your page and only they can see the, um, the, the tips and, and, and the rules. It's all there. And the playlist can be entitled 
We've got a playlist just on lease renewals. We've got a playlist just on chasing late rent. We've got a playlist on setting the tenancy up. We've got a playlist on routine inspection management. We've got a playlist on repairs. And so you can have, just like procedures, all these playlists with five, 10, 20 screen recording videos under one playlist. And as Michael said, it's people think, the, the mistake is people think YouTube is only public. It's not. You can do simple setting change. The video is now unlisted, which means only someone that's got the link can actually watch it, or it can be private, which means only a person with that specific Gmail email address can actually watch it. So you can really screw down the privacy settings and the security settings really, really tight if you want. Um, I, 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 Michael, I just couldn't imagine doing work that I do today in the fast pace that I do it without virtual assistance. I would be lost and so bogged down with so much work, wouldn't it be funny? I mean, yeah, the amount of stuff that you have on your plate, it's insane. I work fast. I can I can put together stuff so quickly now and complex stuff so fast because of these tools like Loom and using Zoom and using text chat and all of these sort of things are just, it, it just, it's, it's an amazing world that COVID really has opened up to a lot of people. You know, Michael, I was just saying to someone else today, if it wasn't for COVID, real estate bosses would still be using servers. Mm. They would still be using servers and property management software based on that. But because COVID came in, it forced them to go to the next level using technology. And we're all, um, it, we're all the benefit of it, um, of doing that. So I think, um, now, okay, so once the lease has now been signed, is there anything else now that uh, the virtual assistant can be doing in tidying things up to finish the lease renewal process? Making sure that all the dates match what's on the lease on the CRM. So no, double checking, yeah, double checking. It's a final double check uh, on there also. Another thing too, Darren, is when you're sending out, when the when the VA sends out the lease renewal, it's the agency that signs off last. So you have a final moment as a PM to check everything off. Yeah. Right? So if, if you need to, to double check things, but the grunt work is all done, the bulk of it's done. So if you need to check off anything... There it is. So if there's any errors, you can have a final quality control. So bosses out there, you concerned that this is a real problem. No, if you've got a checking process in it with your staff, your experienced property manager checking it, this should not be a concern. Your concern is, of course, if your checking process isn't there. You've always got to be checking this stuff. So, Michael, I think that was... Um, that's a really good podcast. There's some good nuts and bolts. I think this is our first podcast where life got in the way and I didn't, and I'm not editing the video or the podcast. It's just going to go on. This is just what Zoom is and what living on Zoom is like. So great, great the, work. The now, just everyone, if you want a list of all the typical tasks that you can outsource. Now, Michael ran a rent roll, 650 properties in Melbourne, 80% of those tasks were outsourced. We've got those in a list. Just go to teamsbydesigntasks.com. That's teamsbydesigntasks.com. But Michael, what's the best and easiest way for people to reach out to you if they want to talk to you? Yep, really easy. Go to teamsbydesign.com, contact us, and, and we'll book in a time to um, have a chat. Cool. All right, everyone, thank you so much. And thank you, Michael. Thank you.